mechanism of hormone actions. Hormones produce their effects on target tissues by binding to the specific proteins called hormone receptors located in the target tissues only. Hormones receptors present on the cell membranes and the target cells are called membrane-bound receptors. And the receptor presence inside the target cells are called intracellular receptors, mostly nuclear receptors. And coming to the binding of the hormones to its receptors leads to the formations of the hormones receptors complex. Its receptors is specific to one hormone only and hence receptors are specific. Hormone receptors complex formation leads to the certain biochemical changes in the target tissues. Here it is the hormone receptor complex. Target tissues metabolism and hence physiological functions are regulated by the hormones can be divided into groups. Number one, peptide, polypeptide, protein hormones, insulin, glucagon, pituitary hormones, hypothalamic hormones, etc. And coming to the next is a steroid, cortisol, testosterone, estradiol, and progesterone. Number three, iodohydronins, thyroid hormones. And number four, amino acids and derivative epinephrine. Now coming to the hormones which interact with membrane-bound receptors normally do not enter the target cells, but generated second messengers. As I said, generated second messengers like cyclic AMP, IP3, calcium ions, etc., which in turn regulates cellular metabolism. Hormones which interact with intracellular receptors called steroid hormones, idotyronins, etc. This is the hormone receptor complex, genomes. Cumulative biochemical actions result in physiological and development effects. Hello everyone, today we discuss about the parathyroid gland. Hyperparathyroidism is a disease of the parathyroid glands affecting 1 in 800 people during their lifetime and 1 in 250 women over age 50. Since parathyroid glands control the levels of the calcium in our bodies, hyperparathyroidism is a disease of improper calcium regulation. There are four parathyroid glands located behind the thyroid gland. Parathyroid glands monitor and control the amount of the calcium in our blood and bones by secreting a hormone called parathyroid hormone or PDH. Its gland monitors the blood calcium and responds by making more or less PDH hormone. Hyperparathyroidism is a disease that occurs when one of the parathyroid glands develops a tumor. This tumor produces far too much parathyroid hormones which is released into the bloodstream. The excess parathyroid hormone travels through the blood and into the bones. The hormone activates cells within the bones to eat away the bones, often causing osteoporosis fractures and a bone pain. The destructions of the bones release calcium into the blood. High blood calcium levels are seen in almost all patients with a parathyroid tumor. The excess calcium and buildup in the arteries increasing atherosclerosis throughout the body. This can lead to high blood pressure and increased risk for heart attack and stroke. 
The high calcium often affects the electrical system of so the heart, causing arterial fibrillation and palpitations. The excess blood calcium builds up in a kidney, forming kidney stones and occasionally causing kidney failure. High calcium levels also affect the brain. Since we use calcium in electrical systems or nerves, high blood calcium is associated with a slower nervous system, which gives symptoms of the tiredness, memory loss, and poor concentration. Many patients with high blood calcium have chronic fatigue. For these reasons, high calcium levels have an effect on the stomach and intestine, often causing gastroesophageal reflex disease, also known as GERD, and abdominal discomfort. High blood calcium is even associated with a higher risk of several cancers, including the breast, prostate, colon, and kidney, some of which are more than twice as common in patients with high blood calcium. Is it estimated that untreated hyperparathyroidism can decrease a patient's life expectancy by the five or six years, even when the calcium is only slightly elevated? There are no drugs, pills, or other treatments that can slow the process of the bone's destruction or take the place of surgical removal of the parathyroid tumor. Hyperparathyroidism is cured by surgical removal of the parathyroid tumor in the hands of expert parathyroid surgery in a straightforward outpatient procedure that can often be completed in less than 20 minutes since as many as 30% of the patients with Hyperparathyroidism will have more than one parathyroid tumor. Your surgeon will examine all four parathyroid glands to be sure a second tumor has not been left behind. Once all parathyroid tumors have been removed, the disease is cured. The process of eating away of the bones stops within minutes. Bone pain is typically gone within a few hours. The bones begin to regenerate within a few days and the osteoporosis begins to improve. The excess calcium in the blood will go on within a few hours. Week or week or most patients feel significantly better health risk of the high blood calcium beginning diminishing within days of the parathyroid tumor removal. Hyperparathyroidism is a disease that typically makes people feel bad while it slowly destroys their body all patients. Within with parathyroidism should be evaluated for a straightforward operation to remove the parathyroid tumor. Carrying this disease has a tremendous impact on a patient's overall health and their quality of life. Thank you.